welcome back to Disturbed Reality. In the year 2022, or whenever you are watching this video, we have become inundated with shocking and disturbing content from all over the world. Whether this be the result of atrocities committed by terrorist organisations such as ISIS, or graphic murders carried out by drug cartels, the content is far too easy to find and is only one click away. To understand the history of shock sites and disturbing content online, we have to go back to the year of 1996. In that year, a website by the name of Goatsy.com went live, and although tamed by today's standards, it was the first site of its kind. A site with the sole intention of shocking whomever stumbled upon it. To put it mildly, the website featured a man posing in, let's say, an unflattering position. As the years passed, however, more and more shock sites popped up online, though showing far more disturbing content. Sites such as Rotten.com and Ogreish launched, showcasing videos from all over the world, highlighting the most graphic of content, such as vehicle wreck aftermaths, self-harm aftermaths, and in some cases, executions and murders. Long before the days of the Iraq war videos, ISIS videos and drug cartel videos, one of the prominent sources of material for such sites were the First and Second Chechen Wars. These conflicts produced well-known disturbing content such as infamous videos like the Dagestan Massacre and Chechclia, videos in which people still discuss to this day. Despite their brutality, the First and Second Chechen Wars are rarely discussed by Western media. The First Chechen War stemmed from the 11th of December 1994 till the 31st of August 1996, whereas the Second Chechen War started on the 26th of August 1999 and officially ended on the 16th of April 2009. It's estimated that anywhere between 150,000 and 300,000 people were killed during both wars combined. As the old saying goes, war is hell, and truth be told, atrocities were committed on both sides. Many of these war crimes were caught on camera, in particular from the Chechen rebel side, the two most well-known examples being the Dagestan Massacre video and the infamous Chechclear video. Interestingly enough, during the wars, the Chechen rebels viewed the execution video as a viable tactic to spread fear amongst their enemies and reduce their morale. Much like we have seen from drug cartels and various terrorist organisations in the years since. A tactic in which the rebels like to use Upon capturing a Russian soldier, they would execute them, usually by decapitation. These events would be filmed on camera, and subsequently, the rebels would very often leave the video recording on the victim's body, so that their comrades would find the body, as well as the recordings. Many of these recordings were traded on the black market in the Chechnya and Dagestan region. An example of this would be the Dagestan Massacre video. Originally, it was being traded on market stalls in the capital of Chechnya, Grozny. It was found in the year 2000 by Russian security services. Truth be told, in the early 2000s, many videos depicting executions from the Chechen wars could be found online, and in particular, on Ogrish.com. One of these lesser known videos went by the title Ofex, or O-F-E-X, and much like the Chechclear case, this video is surrounded in mystery. The video depicts the brutal execution of a Russian serviceman by Chechen rebels. According to Russian authorities, the murder took place in 1996 during the First Chechen War. Allegedly, the victim was 33-year-old Yuri Sitrakov. 
He joined the armed forces on the 6th of October 1994 and subsequently he took part in hostilities in the territory of Chechnya. He was then declared missing on the 8th of October 1996. The status of Yuri's whereabouts remained unclear for several years. However, this all changed in the year 2000 after Russian servicemen destroyed a rebel militant camp in the Vadino district of Chechnya. Upon clearing out the camp of rebels, the servicemen found a videotape which was sent to Russian authorities for investigation. The video depicted the execution of a Russian serviceman. Upon the investigation, the victim was identified as Yuri Sitrakov, the same Yuri who had been declared missing four years prior. It's widely believed that Chechen field commander Salutdin Temebelatov was responsible for the execution. It's also believed by some that Temir Bulatov was behind the Chechklia video. In the early 2000s, he was arrested by Russian authorities for committing dozens of war crimes in the Chechen wars. Despite the victim in the Ofex video being identified as Yuri Sitrakov by Russian authorities, his wife, Tatiana, refutes this claim. In the years that Yuri was declared missing, his wife, Tatiana, would often visit a special laboratory in Rostov where unidentified bodies were stored, many of which being soldiers from the Chechen war. However, Tatiana, in the search for closure and after investigating numerous bodies, could not identify her husband. For years, Tatiana held out hope that her husband could still be alive. However, one day, upon watching the news on TV, Tatiana's ordeal would reach a whole new level. The news anchor reported that Yuri was amongst several who were executed by Chechen rebels. The news was devastating to Tatiana and her two young children. She resigned herself to the fact that she would never see Yuri again and that her children would grow up without a father. Yuri's execution was also shown on Russian TV, however, Tatiana didn't see it, though a couple of months after the news report, Russian special services invited Tatiana to view the video. After years of searching for closure, Tatiana accepted the offer. Upon watching the video, Tatiana said that the man being executed was not Yuri. She brought photos of Yuri with her upon viewing the video to help with the identification and to be sure that the man in the video was indeed Yuri. According to Tatiana, the man in the video could not be Yuri as the shape of his ears and cheekbones were different and also the spread of his eyebrows were not the same. The special service staff retorted Tatiana's claims they tried to explain to her that the lighting and angle played a role. However, she looked at the video again and again and repeatedly said, it's not him. Tatiana reportedly asked for the quality of the video to be restored. However, this request was denied. However, Boris Shkolnikov, who worked for Russian authorities, promised Tatiana that there would be a regenetic examination of the corpse found at the execution site. It's unclear whether this re-examination ever took place. But regardless, despite Tatiana's denial, I think it's safe to assume that Yuri is dead. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual video? As mentioned, the video first surfaced online between the years 2000 and 2001. It first appeared on the now defunct shock site Ogrish.com. The version of the video that I watched still had the Ogrish watermark. Upon playing the video, it appears that the version of Ofex that is online is the TV broadcast version, as it sounds like in the background there is a news reporter talking over it. A background track has also been added to the video. There is some debate whether this was added by the killers or by the news network. The video itself is just over two minutes long. As the video starts, you see the victim, presumably Yuri, sitting on the ground 
in a grassy field. Kneeling next to him is the executioner, and the executioner's face has been blurred. Presumably, it was blurred by the killers. He's pointing a handgun at Yuri, and around 20 seconds into the video, he shoots Yuri either in the arm or in the leg. It's hard to tell due to the grainy footage. It's also worth noting, due to the background music, you can't hear what's going on in the video. After getting shot, Yuri tries to remain stoic, though you can see that he's in a great deal of pain. The video then skips forwards, and at this point, you see another man in the frame, a bald man who is carrying a switchblade, or what appears to be a switchblade, and he's flipping the blade, appearing to give a signal to the executioner. The video cuts forwards once again. At this point, the executioner and the bald man move towards Yuri. They remove his coat with Yuri's cooperation. During this segment of the video, to me it's abundantly clear that Yuri has accepted his fate. He's not running, he's not fighting, and he knows what to expect. Once the victim's coat has been removed, the executioner then takes a long dagger and walks towards the victim. The video cuts forwards once again, and it shows the executioner standing behind the victim, who is still sitting on the ground. He then takes the dagger and starts slashing Yuri's throat. Yuri struggles by trying to kick his legs, but he's overpowered by the executioner, who's now got his knee on his back. As the executioner continues to slice away, Yuri's struggles get less and less. The cameraman moves in to get a closer shot, and you see the life draining from Yuri's face. Blood leaks and puddles onto the grassy floor. The video cuts forwards once again, and it shows the end of the beheading. Yuri's head is removed, and the executioner holds his head up to the camera. The video cuts forwards one more time, and it shows Yuri's decapitated head resting on his body, with a dagger stabbed into the ground next to it. And that is where the video ends. To me, this video perfectly encapsulates the hopelessness of war, and what war truly is. In a sense, it's very similar to videos such as Church Clear and the Dagestan Massacre. It's really hard to put into words or to explain, but these videos have an atmosphere of their own. I don't buy the concept of cursed videos or anything like that, but these videos are just uniquely eerie. Again, the best way I can describe my feelings when watching this video, as well as Church Clear and the Dagestan Massacre, is this deep feeling of hopelessness. That's the best way I can describe it. I really wanted to give a shout out to one of my Twitter friends, Yuri, aka the cup from Two Girls One Cup. He gave me a lot of information and shared various articles surrounding this case, so thank you very much to Yuri, it's much appreciated. This case is extremely complicated, a lot of the articles gave conflicting information, so I covered this case to the best of my ability. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you can enjoy this sort of content. Once again, thank you guys for all of the support. If you have any video topics in mind, please feel free to share them in the comments below, drop me an email, or drop me a DM on Twitter. I'd also like to thank the channel members and Patreon members for your support, it's much appreciated. And yeah, as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.